So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are going to be continuing with the LeBron era rebuilds. It has been a few videos since we've done one, and I thought might as well get back into it with the Los Angeles Clippers. As I'm sure many of you are aware, the LeBron era in 2K24 starts at the beginning of the 2010-2011 NBA season. So technically, Blake Griffin is a rookie at this point in time. He missed his entire rookie season. Real life actually won Rookie of the Year 2010-2011. We're going to go ahead and see if maybe we can repeat that process. The team around him right now isn't that great. We are still a year away from when they actually got Chris Paul in real life. So we don't know if that's going to happen today, but our goal is to build this team up with hopes for a championship. This big three never actually got one together. I'd like to change that today. I've been really enjoying the LeBron era rebuilds. It seems like you guys have been as well. If you want me to continue doing them, other teams, whatever it may be, let me know down below in the comments section which era, which team, all that fun stuff. Of course, along with any other video ideas. So, yeah, man, this is going to be a bit of a challenging one today. This Clippers roster is not extremely, extremely talented, but, you know, having a really good, nice young player, number one overall pick into 2009 NBA draft is going to be really helpful. So let's get into it. All right, man, so let's go over this roster right now. There's definitely some players that are going to stay. There are some players I may trade away before the start of year one, all that fun stuff. So let's just jump right into it, starting at the point guard spot. According to 2K, there is one point guard on this roster, and that is 31-year-old 80 overall Baron Davis. Now, Baron Davis is good. He was good, not is. He was good. I don't want to discredit Baron Davis. I don't know if he's my point guard for a three-year rebuild, but we will find out. Definitely not going to be a day one trade. At least I don't suspect that. Uh, Eric Gordon is here, 83 overall at 21 years old. We eventually came to find out that Eric Gordon was a pretty big piece of the Chris Paul trade. We're not going to dive into all that right now, but... Technically still a year away in this scenario, but we all know at one point in time that the Lakers, the Rockets, and the Hornets had agreed on a three-team deal, and David Stern ended up declining that trade for basketball reasons. Still one of the craziest things of all time. Small forward spot. We have Craig Smith. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know a lot about him because that would just be a straight-up lie. So we'll see. Uh, we have Kenneth Boyd, Jason Robinson. No way this person is real. Uh, and Tito Jones. I'm kind of on that same wavelength. I doubt he's a real person. Let's head to the power forward spot. Blake Griffin is technically entering his rookie year here. He's 21 years old. He's an 88 overall, which is kind of insane to think about. You know, the guy hypothetically right now, hasn't stepped onto an NBA court for an actual game. A little crazy, he's an 88 overall. I know he was the number one overall pick still. Uh, Brian Cook, Robert Henry, Sam Iverson, Willie Love. These are not people that are going to be on this roster for a long time. This is the thing that kind of gets under my skin. At one point or another, at this in this era, in, you know, in this year specifically, the Clippers had a full roster. They weren't, they weren't running out whoever Willie Love is and all these people right here. Look, I have no problem if there's, you know, two auto-generated, like, NPCs on the roster, but when, like, six or seven start getting into the mix, that's a little crazy. I will say that. Um, Chris came in here at the center. He's currently our highest overall. Eventually, we knew that DeAndre Jordan took the reins, and he was a part of the whole Lob City. Very, very fun era in the NBA. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's 22. He's a 79 overall. I do want to let DeAndre Jordan develop. I want to start him. I don't know if that means trading Chris Kamen immediately, but I do think there are needs this team has, and maybe moving him could kind of fill one of those needs. So we'll find out. And then we have Jaron Collins here as well. So I think there's definitely going to be at least one trade. Again, this roster is by no means stacked or anything like that. I really do think this team could maybe be an eight seed, if not draft lottery. So we will find out, but we definitely have a couple trades coming before year one kicks off. Our first trade is going to come with the other team in Los Angeles. That is the Lakers. Kenneth Boyd, Jason Robinson in a 2013 second round pick are just going to change their uniforms and play in the same arena. And Sasha Vujicic and Luke Walton are going to be coming back here. Now, Vujicic is going to be my backup shooting guard. I'm not sure if I'm keeping Luke Walton. We do have some other backcourt needs we do need to address because clearly right now, as you can see, as we just went over, Baron Davis is the only point guard on this roster. So Vujicic will back up Eric Gordon for year one. I also got to figure out a backup small forward because Tito Jones not going to work for me. So um, maybe there's an avenue to explore that I move Brian Cook or Luke Walton. I mean, again, neither of these guys are like franchise changing pieces. Now, to be fair, Brian Cook does have an A plus three point shot. He is six foot nine. Maybe you can just slide him into that spot at the three. I don't know. But he also is expiring with a player option, which makes me think he'll likely decline it. So Eduardo Nahara is here. There's a possibility this man could retire in the offseason, but he is on a multi year deal. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, I'm not really loving a lot of these other offers. We can take Ime Udoga. Um, yeah, I mean, these are kind of the, the offers I expected for a 73 overall. 
Uh, you know, Gary Forbes is here. I just, this doesn't really get me very excited. Uh, you know what? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the trade. Could be a bit of a risk, but we're going to make a straight up one for one swap with the Charlotte Bobcats with Brian Cook heading over to Charlotte and Warren O'Hara coming back here to LA. He's going to be my new backup small forward. He's on a multi year deal. If he retires, he retires. It's not the end of the world, but I don't know. I think that's a pretty good fit. And again, multi year deal is always important to me. So, in terms of finding a backup point guard, I have no idea. Um, I also just want to let you guys know I explored the trade market for Chris Kamen. Really wasn't as good as I was kind of hoping it wasn't going to be was going to be. So I'm not just going to give him up for nothing. I will start DeAndre Jordan. Kamen will come off the bench, but just want to kind of let you guys know that's where we're at. So maybe trading somebody like Jaron Collins here, another expiring contract, looking for some sort of backup point guard. I mean, again, it's not going to be anybody tremendous, and it really doesn't look like it's going to be anybody at all right now. I do need to find somebody to back up um, whatever the hell his name is. I'm already losing out on names. Who, what the fuck are these offers? All right, let's just include, like, Robert Henry in this deal. Keon Dueling, is that really going to be my... Eh, it's not a terrible season. He's a 72 overall. I have suspicions this team will not be good, and honestly, that's kind of fine with me. You know, this team was never winning a championship year one, so it is fun to maybe help them set up for some future success a little bit more, but I guess Keon Dueling is going to be my guy. Seven, one, and two and a half. I don't know. Whatever. Welcome to the team. All right, man. So Baron Davis now has a backup. It is 72 overall, 30-year-old Keon Dueling. We have backups at every other spot. Let's set the rotation. My apologies. We have one final trade. If 2K wants to be annoying and lazy and put auto-generated, not real people on my roster, then I'm going to abuse the system. 68 overall Bruce Ferguson and 67 overall Sam Iverson are heading to Memphis for a 2014 first-round pick. And Jim Edwards, who looks like he's on an expiring contract. So... 2K, you want to play games? I can play some games too. Let's set the rotation. So top to bottom, this team isn't absolutely terrible. I think it's relatively clear that there are definitely a lot worse teams in the league than us right now. But that all being said, I really don't suspect this team is a serious threat here in the Western Conference, a Western Conference that is very, very good. I would rather be bad in year one and then go ahead and kind of capitalize on the next two seasons. So again, that's my hope. I don't know if it's going to happen, but hopefully it does. Baron Davis and Eric Gordon are going to be our backcourt. No surprises there. Craig Smith is here as our starting small forward. Obviously, Blake Griffin, you know, clear number one option on this team. Prized rookie is going to be our starting power forward. Then I'm starting DJ next to him. Again, maybe Cayman's a higher overall. I'm not going to go with that. I'm not exploring that avenue. He will be my sixth man off the bench, though. So it is very rare that I have sixth men as like centers and any sort of big men. But this is kind of one of those situations that calls for it. Sasha Vujicic backs him up. Eduardo Nahara is here. Luke Walton and then Keon Dueling. So not a good bench, really, kind of whatsoever. And uh, it's something we'll work on in the offseason. But this is the group here for year one. I'll see you guys at the end of it. So I'm a little surprised by our record. I don't really know why I'm saying that. I wanted to be bad, and we were, but I didn't really think we'd be this bad. We won 21 games, which is just awful, clearly. I thought there was more talent on this team than that. I guess not. I mean, I, in the end, it probably helps us more than if we won, say, 35 games, but it's still kind of weird. Uh, LeBron James, first year in Miami, is your MVP. Blake Griffin does win a Rookie of the Year. I guess that's one of the positive notes of this season for us. Pretty impressive numbers from Blake Griffin. Mono Ginobili is your sixth man of the year. Dwight Howard is your deep boy. Marcin Gortat, most improved, backing up Dwight Howard. And Alan Bibby is your coach of the year. So three Orlando Magic players, or, well, two and a coach, all receive awards. So clearly, tw you know, whatever it was, 20-whatever wins is not going to be a playoff spot. Let's see where we landed here in a very good West. 21 wins was the second worst record in the West. It was the second worst record in all of basketball. So maybe high draft pick coming our way. We'll find out. Let's check out the numbers on the season, see how everybody played. Eric Gordon was our leading scorer around 20 and a half points a game. He's an 84 overall and he's only 22 years old. So, I mean, unless I pull off a Chris Paul trade, maybe he's another building block for us today. Blake Griffin was our second leading scorer, one rookie of the year. Uh, Baron Davis was pretty good. I mean, 15 points, two and a half boards, eight and a half assists is, is a very nice stat line. Now that field goal percentage percentage isn't great again he is now 32 i don't know if he's going to be here the entire time but he could be a tradable piece i'm not i'm not saying either way just saying we have options uh chris Kamen as our sixth man off the bench was our fourth leading scorer craig smith sasha vujicic deandre jordan keon dueling nahara and then luke walton rebound is going to be led by blake griffin and assist was baron davis so let's send through these playoffs a lot of good teams here in these playoffs and uh yeah i don't really know who's going to win it all it is going to be a heat and a spurs finals Thing in real life, this was the year of the Mavericks in the Heat. And the Heat win it all in LeBron's first year in Miami. They did not do that in real life. And he does get a finals MVP. That would be his first finals MVP, first championship. All right. Player retirement, Celtics Shaq. 
the GOAT, Juwan Howard, Kurt Thomas, Jerry Stackhouse, Ratliff, Grant Hill. A lot of names there. Staff retirements, Hall of Fame, Shaq. Jersey retirements, Ben Wallace. Grant Hill, Shaquille O'Neal. Historic changes. We all know what's coming with these probably at this point. Incremental luxury tax. It's You guys get it. Uh, draft lottery. This is a very important, important night for us. We also have a Minnesota pick. I have no idea if there's projections on that. I didn't look at our picks at all before I simmed year one. I probably should have. But we're currently projected the number two overall pick. We have the second best odds at the number one overall pick. And we fall all the way to five. That's how it works for me in these videos. Um, it does not appear that we have the other draft pick for Minnesota. That sits at number seven. So I'm probably going to assume we have their pick next year. Uh, I know Vinny Del Negro was the coach of this team, is the coach of this team. Actually, was he the coach in real life? I actually don't know that. Was he? I don't know. We're going back to when I'm 10, 11 years old. But uh, nonetheless, he has pretty good ratings and pretty good potential here. I think I can give him another year now that I kind of have full control of the roster and all the moves we're going to make. So I'll keep Vinny for now. Not saying he'll be here the rest of the video, but he'll stay. His job is safe. Let's go ahead and start this rebuild. So the fifth overall pick is not as good as the second overall pick. Clearly, dumbass. I think there's a move to make still. You know, we have 13 and 17 in round two. This is the 2011 draft class. Jimmy Butler, Kyrie Irving, Kawhi Leonard. I mean, there's a lot of players here that could really help this team. So I don't know exactly which one of these players I want. I'm leaning towards getting some sort of forward or maybe a replacement at the point guard spot, which kind of leaves me with maybe Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving, maybe somebody like Jimmy Butler, even Kemba Walker could be in the mix here. So there are a lot of different avenues we can explore here, which almost makes me feel like I could stay at number five. I don't want to pay a hefty, hefty cost, but I think maybe moving up to three. So we're guaranteed one of Kawhi, Kyrie, or Jimmy Butler might be the smartest kind of direction to go. So who does have the third overall pick? It is the Toronto Raptors. I don't know exactly how much I'll have to pay in order to get this to happen, but I think we can probably find something, some common ground, if you will. I mean, they wouldn't be dropping too many spots. So that's number three. This is number five. Do you have any counters? They do not. How about just the two second round picks? And then uh, Eduardo O'Hara did not retire. So if you have any interest in him, you're more than welcome to have him. Uh, Keon Dueling, these are not players I'm going to be keeping. So um, who else is here? Luke Walton, you want him? Wow. All right, that kind of feels like a bit of a steal. Three rotation pieces for me that weren't going to be here anyways, but I will 100% take it. So let's see who goes number one. Number two, it's obviously going to kind of pertain to who we end up taking at number three. So number one overall is Kawhi Leonard. He is now a New Jersey Nets. Number two is the Warriors. Who are they going to go with? They take Jonas Valanciunas. Interesting decision. Long career for Jonas Valanciunas, still in the league. Don't know if that's who I'm taking there. So my decision is pretty much for me anyways, between Kyrie Irving and Jimmy Butler. Now, I don't want to discredit Kemba Walker, Clay Thompson. I don't think any of those, either of these pieces are really going to be as good as somebody like Kyrie or Jimmy Butler was. And I know how good Clay was in his prime. I'm not saying that he wasn't good. Do not get me wrong. But I really do think that Kyrie and Jimmy Butler would be a little bit more beneficial for me. So real life, Kyrie went number one. I don't know. I think there is, you know... Two different kind of options here. You know, if I take somebody like Jimmy Butler, clearly would be my starting small forward. But I think Kyrie Irving is going to, one, come in be a higher overall. You can see it right there, at least according to our scouting department. And I think he's going to be easier to build around. I really do. We're looking for a nice, young, kind of transcendent piece. I think Kyrie Irving's that guy. So I'm going to go ahead and take him. Welcome to L.A. Going to be our new starting point guard moving forward, meaning Baron Davis all likelihood on his way out now, and we'll figure it out from there. So Blake Griffin, Eric Gordon, definitely both coming back here. That's very important. DeAndre Jordan is somebody who's going to be my starting center moving forward. I definitely have to get him. And then, oh, wow, I don't have bird rights on. That kind of stinks. Um, Carmelo Anthony is here in free agency. I think it would be a really big signing for us. Now, I don't know if he would actually sign with us. Uh, he has 15 offers and... One from the New York Knicks, one from the Denver Nuggets, funny enough. So I don't know if he would land here. The rest of this free agency class is okay. It, there's really no like number one on a championship team outside of maybe Melo, and I know the irony in that statement, but you understand what I'm saying. So I don't know exactly what's going to come next. Right now, what I do want to figure out is who's going to be my starting small forward because we have pretty much every other position figured out, and I think it is time for a big move. We're going to pull off a pretty big deal here with the Memphis Grizzlies. We're going to be sending Chris Kamen and Baron Davis to Memphis. Rudy Gay and Tony Allen are going to be coming back here to Los Angeles. So my thought process in this one is we clearly got our new starting small forward in Rudy Gay. Tony Allen's going to be an incredible piece to come off the bench for me. And then Kamen, not going to be here anyways. DeAndre Jordan's taking over as the starting center. Well, already did, but you know what I'm saying. And then Baron Davis is getting a little bit older. That overall is going to go down. So I'm very excited about the idea of kind of having Rudy Gay here. I don't know if he's really that kind of transcendent player 
that we could possibly be looking for on this team, but I don't think it's a bad trade overall. Uh, Willie Love is just not somebody that needs to be on this team, so I'll take a first-round pick from Chicago. Thank you very much. And we kind of take a look at this roster right now. We have the entire starting five figured out once I re-sign DeAndre Jordan. Hopefully, I can go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to really kind of turn my focus to is really going ahead and figuring out. Actually, he's restricted. I can actually maybe sign some other pieces as well. Um, so I do got to find some backup guards. I'm good at the backup three. And honestly, I need pretty much backups everywhere. So we do have money. I'm not really going to go out and sign somebody like Tony Parker or Mike Conley. I'm kind of thinking a little bit lower level, like somebody like J.J. Barea for five and a half mil. That's a good deal for me. Small, or excuse me, shooting guard spot. Vince Carter, a little old. Jamal Crawford, 31. But somebody like Nick Young, about $8.5 million. I think these are pretty good deals. And so we do that. We maybe don't renounce either Craig Smith or DeAndre Jordan yet. And we just wait. Let's just wait through the rest of the moratorium. Hopefully DJ doesn't get an offer. He has not. So Berea and Nick Young are going to be our backup guards. Now we got to see what we have in terms of maybe somebody at the backup four. So somebody like Thad Young could be fun. We have to make sure we keep enough money to bring back DeAndre Jordan. He only has an $800,000 qualifying, so it looks like we're going to be able to keep him. Uh, and then we do need to find a backup center as well. So let's see. Kendrick Perkins, I know I've signed him before, but he's clearly kind of the best option here. So big perk. Oh, DeAndre Jordan's going to the next. Okay, match this. I'll wait on perk. I don't want to risk it. DJ is coming back. And then can I still sign perk? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh... I have no idea who my small forward is going to be. I could also just bring back Vujicic and then maybe trade him. Do some sort of sign-in trade there. That's actually a lot of money. <laughs> let's not do that much. Uh, let's see. Sasha Vujicic. I'll give him like, we'll do like $4 million. Probably some few options there. So I'm going to renounce Craig Smith. He can go. And then Vujicic is just going to be somebody I trade immediately. He is six foot seven. Maybe could slide him into the small forward spot if I don't find somebody who's like really good. But Kyle Korver. I like Kyle Korver a lot. But I don't really want to give him a first-round pick. Uh, would I do that, though? I don't know. I might. I mean, I'm really Chuck Hayes, but nah. Not really the three I'm looking for. So there's not really a lot of options here. So what I give up, what a first-round pick is this? This is our own first in 2015. I think I would. I really do. I think adding somebody like Kyle Korver would really fit this team well. So maybe not like a significant upgrade or anything, but I like Kyle Korver a lot. I really do. So he'll come in. He's actually, oh, wait, I, I'm so fucking stupid. I forgot how we traded for Tony. <laughs> oh, wow. I am fucking dumb. Dumb as a goddamn sack of bricks. All right. Well, I fucked that one up. That's just completely just a brain fart going on with me. So, uh, yeah, let's just take a first round pick back from the Milwaukee Bucks. Jesus fucking Christ. My mistake. I'm all over the place today. All right, man. We have uh, kind of retooled this team completely now. So we're looking forward to a really good second season. I'll see you guys in the rotation. We had a pretty crazy offseason. We went ahead and made a lot of changes to this team, and they were changes that were needed. I'm really looking forward to kind of the future and this year in general for how this team kind of shakes out. Now, I don't know if we're like top-tier Western Conference teams, but I definitely think we're a playoff team. I think we could make some noise as well. So let's find out. Kyrie Irving, Eric Gordon going to be in my backcourt. You have Rudy Gay here, newly acquired at the three. Blake Griffin is still locking it down. He's our franchise player at the four. And then we brought back DeAndre Jordan. We knew the entire time he was the center we wanted to build around. Went ahead and obviously moved on from Chris Kamen. So the bench has gotten significantly better as well. Nick Young is actually an 84 overall. And funny enough, the game actually wants him to start over Eric Gordon. I'm not going to do that. Eric Gordon, which is our leading scorer, had a really good first season for, well, first season of this video for us. And I'm not ready to make that move, but he's going to be a tremendous six man for me. Thaddeus Young is his backup. JJ Beret is our backup point guard. Tony Allen, who I, sorry, I forgot I had low key. Uh, and then big Kendrick Perkins. So, you know, this isn't the worst team in the world for a year or two. I think we've completely done a 180. We're no way we're only winning 21 games this year. I'll see you guys at the end of year two here in LA. It is back-to-back -back MVPs for the Miami Heat. This time, it is Dwayne Wade's turn. This season, we won 59 games. Much, much better from the 21 last season. This team is a serious threat here in the Western Conference. Kawhi Leonard went number one overall to the Nets. He wins Rookie of the Year. Steven Jackson, six men of the year in Charlotte. Dwight Howard, I believe that's two straight deep boys now. Ish Smith, most improved. I mean, all right. Uh, and Tibbs is your coach of the year. So it looks like the Bulls are the one seed there in the East. And uh, we are the two seed here in the West. So I will take it. I will 100% take it. 159 games. That's three behind the Thunder who are clearly young, up and coming. And it was what? That's at the fourth fourth best record in all of basketball. And I still think that's an overachievement, if I'm being quite honest with you. So here's the numbers. Rookie Kyrie Irving led us in scoring. Blake Griffin follows him, who averaged 14 and almost, what the fuck? 
That's insane. Eric Gordon, Rudy Gay, Nick Young, Thad Young, J.J., DeAndre Jordan, Allen, and Kendrick Perkins. Um, we know who rebounds is going to be. That's Blake Griffin with nearly 15 a game. There's no way. Was Blake Griffin ever near 15 rebounds a game? His career? I doubt it. I, I mean, he was good, but I don't know 15 rebounds. That's a lot. Uh, and Kyrie is our leader in assists. So it is us in the Hornets here in the first round. This scenario, Chris Paul would technically be on the Clippers at this point. That's so crazy to think about, dude. I know the league owned the Hornets at this time, and they didn't want to send them to L.A. and create that juggernaut with Kobe and Chris Paul, and then Dwight Howard shows up. I understand. I just still think it's crazy that, like, David Stern can do that. And I, I read an article saying that, you know, the Cavaliers owner Dan Gilbert and the Mavericks owner Mark Cuban like wrote a letter to the league saying that they like would not be a fan of it. Thought it would be like an imbalanced league. It's just that's crazy to me. There was no scenario where the league. I, I mean, I don't really know how it happened to me. Honestly, I probably should have read more. But how the hell did the league own a team? Was it because they were an expansion franchise and nobody bought them? I don't know. We sweep them nonetheless. Moving on to the six seeded Timberwolves, who are now here in the second round. You got Mike Conley, OJ Mayo, Michael Beasley, Kevin Love, Justin Higgins. I don't know who that is. You got Jared Jack off the bench, Luke Ridenauer. All right, this is a fun team. They beat the, you know, dominant San Antonio Spurs. Good for you. Uh, we are probably going to beat them, if I had to imagine. We're up 3 1 right now, and okay, hang on a damn minute. All right, we are officially out of the second round, which was the biggest problem for the Lob City era Clippers. I mean, I know Chris Paul's not here, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, and now comes a real test. How the hell they had enough money to sign Zach Randolph, who I believe was just like the third highest overall free agent last year's class? Kind of ridiculous to me. This is a super team. Kind of goes without being said. So I, we, are, this is probably the end of the road for us if I, if I had to take a guess. We do win game one. Uh, they win game two. We win game one on our home floor. They tie it up. We go up 3-2. And it's gone win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. Will that pattern stay true? It will. That's an upset. I don't know. I don't care which way you spin that. There's no way we're better than that Thunder team. That's an upset. Meaning we are now in the finals taking on yet another super team. They've had the past two years MVPs in Dwayne Wade, LeBron James. You still got Chris Bosh here. Now, I will say the rest of the starting five compared to that Thunder team we just beat is not nearly as good with Ish Smith who did just win a most improved, and Jeff Foster, Mike Dunleavy off the bench, Mike Miller, who was a clutch player in the finals. I don't know if we can beat this team, but my God, I think we have a chance. We're up 3-1 right now. Is this going to really be from, I don't want to say worst to first, because it wasn't exactly that, but we're going to win here in year two. We're getting the Clippers a championship here in our second season. Wow. I did not think we were that good yet, but we are. I'll see you guys in there for a few shots up. I think this is going to be back-to-back -back series where we pull off an upset. Now, I don't want to sit here and undersell us because we're clearly a good team, but, you know, anybody who beats this big three Miami Heat team, it's an upset. So, I mean, I'd call what the Dallas Mavericks did in 2011 an upset. I think the majority of you would probably agree with me there. So, you know, I think this team just really does fit well together. I think we have a little bit of everything. We've got some shooting off the bench. We obviously have some defense with Tony Allen. Blake Griffin is just dominant as hell. And I really do like kind of the fit of this team. So, I think that's one thing we really did well to kind of kick off year two here and we've set ourselves up for success and clearly that's coming true so Clippers fans I'm happy I'm getting who the fuck is that I'm happy I'm getting you a championship I really am so we still have one year to go after this we're definitely not done but uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and just build this thing and hope we can head into our final season with the championship I mean I don't know what moves we'll make I wouldn't mind maybe getting an upgrade behind the Andre Jordan no disrespect to the Great Kendrick Perkins, who is now an ESPN analyst for God knows what fucking reason. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's still some things we can do with this team. So let's just try to pull out right now. Let's call an ISO here. And then fuck it. Give me a quick floppy. Let's see Eric Gordon get a three-point shot up. I hope it's Gordon taking it. It is. All right. Let's just work through a screen. That's not really the, oh, the, the fuck. That's a boof. I do not know Eric Gordon's release. That's that's on me. Uh, we'll do one more defensive possession, then one more offensive. This one is clearly, oh, just shoot. Just d wait. Shoot the, shoot. I don't care. Hello? Oh my God, that's insane. That <laughs> I leave Ishmith alone at the top of the three-point line. It doesn't doesn't take the three. All right, man, I want to go a little pick and roll here. Can I get Blake Griffin into the mix right now? He's probably not going to be the one setting the screen. Oh, he is. Let's learn a little bit of a pick and roll here with Blake Griffin. Oh, what a note to end it on. Maybe a bit of a surprise, but a year two championship. We are very, very happy with that. And Blake Griffin, and technically just his second year in the league, is your finals MVP. Very deserving with numbers like that. So yeah, I mean, I 
am very happy right now. I really am. Derek Fisher calls it a career at age 37. Eric Dampier, Brad Miller, Jeff Foster. Interesting. Uh, didn't look like there's a lot of Hall of Famers there. I mean, is Derek Fisher in the Hall of Fame? He should be. Is what? Three, four rings? Um, yeah, just do all that fun stuff. Now, draft lottery. I don't think we've traded for anything that's going to be in here. I don't see a Clipper logo, so it doesn't look like that's the case. And uh, yeah, it, whatever. Who cares? Um, staff signing. Vinny's going to end up staying. Won it all with us. No reason to move on. Um, so let's head up to the draft. Let's see what we do have. I know we don't have our own first. We do have the first round pick of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, I don't know. I'm like 90% positive I didn't trade my first round pick this year. So maybe it was already traded. I don't know what deal that would be in, but it's not here. So uh, we do have number 20 overall. We have 27. I know people might get mad about this. There's no rookie I'm going to draft right now that's going to either play on this team or significantly help us. So I'm just going to trade him. I'm sorry if that annoys you. I know some people get their panties in a twist when I trade my first round picks after a championship. Nobody I draft is helping me. Uh, this is a thing of beauty. Our finals MVP, our superstar, $7 million. He's going to be coming back to us. Uh, Eric Gordon is getting qualified. Very important piece here, clearly. And uh, yeah, I mean, oh wow, I don't have rights on Eric Gordon. Are you fucking kidding me? Is it not going to let me bring back Eric Gordon? That's a fucking travesty if that's the case. That's just sad. Uh, I did it in first name, didn't I? Uh, I need to clear this out. That sucks. If if the game's not going to let me bring back Eric Gordon, I mean, he was such a fun kind of key piece of this championship team. So, uh, no, it's not. All right, well, that, that just stinks. Um, I can see we're clearly out of cap space anyway. So, even if I cleared up, you know, the whatever, it's we're way too far past that. So, yeah, I mean... Kind of shitty. Kind of feel like we should. Was he a second round pick? Was that Eric Gordon a second round pick? Was he? Actually, was Eric Gordon a second round pick? Uh, no, he was the seventh. Yeah. Why do I not have bird rights on him? Is that just 2K being dumb? I feel like it probably is. He is. Okay, he is restricted. I forgot. He has a qualifying. Maybe I'm just bitching for no reason. So maybe I will be able to get him back if he if I probably should be able to match anything. That is strange, though. I find that very, very weird. Do I bring Chris Kamen back and just kind of wrap it all around? You know what? Fuck it. Let's bring Chris Kamen back. Um, unless I have to renounce Eric Gordon, which I do not. So maybe I'm able to bring him back. I hope I am. I'd like to retain. Okay. Match. Sorry, Chris. I'm just, I'm not going to risk it. So... Okay, we're good. And then is he still going to let me bring in Chris Kamen? It is. All right, so that was me getting worked up for nothing. My apologies. I made a few mistakes today. Can't fix myself always. Um, yeah, I mean, Chris Kamen's 30. He's probably going to be like a 78 overall, but it's not the end of the world. Other than that, I mean, there's really not much here. Maybe I find an upgrade for Tony Allen, but I really do think his defense is very important on this team. We also have Rudy Gay. Pretty good defensive. What's Rudy Gay? Rudy Gay was a good defensive player at one point. Um, so Kendrick Perkins is just not needed. Um, you know, I could pull off a big trade and make some significant move and go out and trade for some other superstar. I don't want to do that. I like this team a lot. I think everybody fits really well together. So what I'll do, unless there's some like beautiful, beautiful trade here that finds me like a really big upgrade over Tony Allen. I see Landry Fields. Yeah, right, pal. Yeah, yeah, there's just nothing here. I mean, just curious. Just just out of curiosity, because I know some people will still get upset if I don't at least look. Um, they're making like what six and a half, seven million dollars combined. I'll just look. I will see who is here. We'll do seven million. Yeah, it's like James Arden. No, Paul George probably not. I wish could maybe go get Demar. Gordon Hayward is here. I don't know. Is Michael Beasley really you know bring me much interest? I I really don't think so. I kind of like the identity that somebody like Tony Allen has. Wesley Matthews could actually be a fun idea. I don't know if this is really worth it for me because I do think Tony Allen is good and I think he fits this team, as I've mentioned now, six times really well. But why the hell not? We're entering the final season. We have the draft picks. Fuck it. Sorry, Tony Allen. If anybody's pissed at that, my fault. All right, man. I will see you guys at the start of the third and final season. After a championship season that was maybe a little bit unexpected, again, I'm not trying to discredit us in any way, shape, or form, we are back here and ready for our final regular season in LA. Now, this team had a couple changes. Nothing too, too significant. I think this roster is still marvelous. It's probably actually even better than last year with development and everything. So Kyrie Irving, Eric Gordon, Rudy Gay, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan remains our starting five. Nick Young will stay as our six men off the bench. Game still wants him to start. I'm not doing it. Eric Gordon's a very good player. So is Nick Young, but you understand. Uh, new addition here in Wesley Matthews. We obviously went ahead and traded Tony Allen and Kendrick Perkins for him. Again, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. 
I really just do like Tony Allen quite a bit, though, so I'm a little upset. Uh, Thad Young is going to be our backup for Chris Kamen. Actually didn't go down in overall. I thought he would, but we bring him back to back up DeAndre Jordan and then J.J. Barea still rounding out that rotation as the backup for Kyrie Irving. So this is a very good team. I fully expect to be in the mix again. I don't want to call last year a Cinderella run. Let's go out and prove it wasn't. So we didn't end this video with an MVP, but we did end it with a record of 71-11. and 11. Just a mwah, beautiful, beautiful way to end a really, really good final regular season. Hopefully another championship season. Derrick Rose does get an MVP. Absolutely insane numbers. Very deserving. Anthony Davis ends up as a Portland Trailblazer and he's your rookie of the year. Jordan Farmar, sixth man. Dwight Howard is now a Raptor, but wins a third straight depoy. Trevor Booker most improved in Vinny is our coach of the year, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Hell yeah, Vinny. All right, man, clearly 71 wins is going to be the one seed. We we're only four games up on the Thunder, so not as big of a gap as what you would maybe typically think. But uh, you know what? Who gives a shit? We're ready to go out, and we're ready to win this whole fucking thing. So let's go out and do that. Blake Griffin, again, just an insane season. All right, us in the Sacramento Kings, who are in the playoffs. Good for you. They never got to the playoffs in the boogie era, so good for you guys here. I think we're better at every position but center. I think that's... Oh. Okay. What? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have really have words. You know, I'm not really mad. I'm kind of just surprised. I, I I should have stopped it, but I don't know what that would have changed. That's crazy. I know Boogie was dominant, and yeah, I'm not trying to discredit. I mean, maybe I was sleeping on that team a little bit, but really, I don't know about that one, man. Yeah, I mean, I I guess we just didn't have it. You know, when you don't have it, you don't have it. Wow, maybe we were frauds. I don't know. I <laughs> What in the name of the Miami Heat did I just watch right there? I mean, 8 seed to finals? That's that's insane. I don't know. I, I, I really don't. I mean, that's a surprise to say the least. I mean, you win 71 games. You at least think you're going to win a playoff game. But yeah, I mean, that's just... Sometimes 2K surprises you with good things. Sometimes they surprise you with bad things. That's kind of the way it goes sometimes. This was definitely a surprise. I can say that with a fact in a straight face. But yeah, insane. Definitely not the way I thought this video was going to end. I'm a little disappointed. I mean, I'm happy I got a championship, but yeah. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. So yeah, man, uh, this one was still a blast. I definitely enjoyed making it. I've been having a lot of fun in the LeBron era rebuilds. Really just because, one, it takes me back to my childhood. I like reminiscing. Sue me. Uh, and on top of that, there's some fun players that are in their primes that are maybe still in the league today that we can get. Like, it's just, it's really fun. I really do enjoy it. So hopefully you guys are as well. Um, again, I'm happy to continue doing these rebuilds with pretty much every single team. So let me know which one you want me to do next down below in the comment section. So yeah, man, that is it for me. I know this video has already been long enough. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.